Uh, this afternoon, I'm very excited to be hosting a very phenomenal young lady who actually had to take down what you call yourself from your <laughs> LinkedIn profile. <laughs> yeah, so she calls herself a corporate strategist. Of course, she is an economist, uh, a fitness trainer. Mm, we're going to delve much into this as well. <laughs> Toastmaster, okay? So we're going to know what you're toasting. <laughs> <laughs> Sales enthusiast, and of course, currently serving as the managing director for Poised Insurance Brokers Limited. Yes. Mumba, welcome to the Mind Power Career Talk podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Emmanuel. I'm very excited that I'll be hosting you on this show. Thank having you. Having an exciting conversation. So to begin the ball rolling, we'd want to appreciate, first of all, who is Mumba mm. Where do you come from? Mm. What do you carry? What mm. are you made up of? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so from my name, my name is Mumba mm. However, when you hear the name Mumba most people usually assume that I'm from the East. I'm not from the East. Mm. I'm actually Lala by tribe. Okay. Somehow my father left out an apostrophe in the Ngoma. It's supposed uh, to read Mumba Ngoma. Ngoma, not in. Oh, okay. It's okay. Mumba Ngoma. Mumba. All right, all right. Yes, all right. from Lala, from, from Lala. the Lala tribe. Okay. Mukushi um, district, okay. central province. That all is right. me. All right. I come from a family of five. That is from my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. I am the third born. Mm -hmm. Then uh, five years after my mom passed, my dad got married. And from that line, I have another sibling from mom and dad. That's from my mom and my, from my stepmom and my dad. Mm -hmm. And then from my mom, I have three new siblings. So that's, I have eight siblings. That's a very big number. <laughs> You're almost making a football team. Yeah, true, <laughs> true, very yeah, true. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Let's now look at your professional and also educational journey, mm -hmm. beginning with your educational journey. Okay. Uh, what did you study? Where did you study from? And how did you begin your corporate journey, stepping into the world of work? Okay. Do you want me to start from grade one or just university? So let's start from high school. From high school. Because we are speaking to high school pupils and okay. of course university or college students as no well. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did my high school at Kablonga Girls. Okay. That's grade 10 to mm -hmm. In grade 10, 11, and 12 yeah. at Kablonga Girls. And when I was at Kablonga Girls, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to do accounting. Mm -hmm. I think from the time I was introduced to bookkeeping in grade 8, yeah. I was so set to say I would go into accounting. I wanted to do SEMA mm -hmm. because I was told to say you don't only concentrate on the numbers, but then there's the management, management aspect. Management aspect of it, yeah. Yes, yeah. so yeah. I was told that. And then the other thing which I was told was if, if you go to Zika's, mm -hmm. you can actually transition straight from grade 12 and just go straight into Zika's using your mock yeah. results. So that's what I wanted to do. Okay. But sometime in grade 12, mm -hmm. my uncle also introduced another career to me that mm. was economics he mentioned to say there's this course where you can study the economy yeah. at a macro level and a micro level it also has got numbers and figures yeah. and being somebody who's always been more comfortable with numbers compared to theory <laughs> yes uh, <right. laughs> i thought okay this is interesting maybe mm. it could be an option to consider yeah yeah, so when I was done with grade 12, my family wasn't at a place where they could sponsor me to go to Zika's. Yeah. So automatically, the second option became the most viable option because mm. there was the issue of bursary at yeah. the University of Zambia. So I waited it out, applied mm. to go to the University of Zambia, and of course it wasn't automatic that I was going to just go into economics. economics yeah. I had to make the points in yeah. the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Mm -hmm. And after making the points into economics, I then majored into economics and minored into demography. Demography. So, yeah. Yes, so I have a degree in economics okay. and then a minor in, in demography. demography. So then when you talk about transitioning into mm -hmm. the corporate world, mm -hmm. I think this is an interesting one because... Yeah. 
sometime in my second year yeah. i have this friend his name is gokani mzomara okay in second year gokani came to me and he told me mumba as we are studying this course that we are studying are you aware that there are programs out there called graduate trainee programs mm. I didn't know anything about them. I was just thinking, okay, let me be done with my school yeah. and then find a job. And so he explained to say that these are programs that easily set you up for management positions in organizations because they will put you in a program, they'll teach you everything about that company and then you it's easy for them to pick you to be a manager in one of their departments when there's an opening. Yeah. So at the University of Zambia of course you start making your points in third year third for year. uh graduating whether you're going to graduate with a credit a merit or a distinction or without so, a name yes <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. yes uh-huh. so he really labored on that yeah. and i thought you know what if life offers such opportunities why shouldn't i go for it mm. but the interesting thing emmanuel was when we were done fourth year yeah uh when our results came out the we needed to make 20 points mm-hmm. in third and fourth year for us to make a merit mm. and you know what i made 18.5 i made 18.5 i looked at my results then i found that there was one course which i was so sure to say this one yeah. they did not mark properly uh-huh. so i went back to the head of department at that time i was so sure because what you i wanted needed wanted the 1.5 yes <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. I really needed the 1.5. Yeah. So, I went back to the head of department and told him to say on this one I know yeah. I got a B plus or better because yeah. me getting a B plus or better in that particular course meant that I would have made 20 points or better. Yeah. And so he goes and he corrects the records and unfortunately it moved from a C to a B and i missed i still missed, missed the credit <laughs> by 0.5, 0.5. <laughs> you know it reminds me um, back then at of course i went to copper belt university mm. so i was in the faculty of business studies and economics mm-hmm. but i pursued uh, business administration okay. with a focus in public finance mm. yeah so i missed a distinction just by 1.5 wow yeah So I tried as well I was I was frustrated. Mm. So whenever I was asked uh, what did you graduate with? I graduated with a merit and missed a distinction <laughs> by 1.5. So the statement <laughs> wasn't complete if I just said I graduated with a merit. So you yeah. can understand the pain <laughs> yeah. that I was in because no, for me I, I wasn't I well. wasn't only looking at having a merit mm-hmm. on my paper. It was oh my god, my chances of getting into a graduate trainee program. Mm. That I don't have those chances anymore. Yeah. So I remember I think it took a week for me to recover from yeah. that. Yeah. So that was but some serious shock, eh? Yeah, <laughs> it was. It yeah. really was. Mm-hmm. But I never stopped fighting. Yeah. I still applied for those uh graduate yeah, trainee programs. programs. Yeah. I remember I was only called for an aptitude test for one of them mm-hmm. and I got in. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. Brilliant. So, so that was with which uh, which company? That's with Holland Holland Insurance. Insurance. Oh. Yes. At Amazing. Yes. Yeah. At the time they called me to go and do the aptitude test. Yeah. I was actually working as an intern uh-huh. for CTPD, Center for Trade Policy, Policy and Development. development yeah, yeah. Yes, I had interned there for like uh two months. Mm-hmm. Then I was called to go and do an aptitude test. Mm-hmm. I remember Holland didn't do the aptitude test themselves. They engaged a consultancy firm yeah. to do the recruitment for them. Okay. Emmanuel there were over 300 graduates and they only wanted 3. 3 out of 300. They only wanted 3. <laughs> I mean numbers numbers anyway uh, for every massive re- recruitment numbers are always crazy. Mm. Talk of government recruitment mm. I mean just recently we saw those crazy numbers like they only need 30,000 teachers but mm. 100,000 plus were applying yeah. talk of ZRA you see multitudes you know you'd be wondering like is there a crusade or maybe Jesus has come is performing some miracle <laughs> somewhere you just see a number of people yeah fighting for 10 positions yeah uh, five positions you, you you've mentioned just of three, three positions so the world of work really is very very competitive it is yeah so and how did you outsmart 
297 imagine just imagine that <laughs> So the first stage were the aptitude tests uh-huh. and how I knew that there were over 300 uh graduates was because some of my friends had been called weeks before I was called to actually go and do aptitude tests. Mm. They were calling people in segments. Yeah. And out of those 300 plus graduates, about 54 made it to a stage where they needed to go and get interviewed still by the consultancy mm-hmm. firm the yeah. uh, recruitment agency yeah so the number dropped from 300 plus to 54 and when when it dropped it was the aptitude mission that it's an aptitude test that yeah, we yeah. did eh? yeah. i think i i got 56 mm-hmm. and there were My number wasn't uh, my name wasn't even among the top 20, 20. from those who made it on yeah. the 54 but I just remember talking to God uh-huh. she said look I, I need you to give me the faith to believe that I can get this mm. yeah and I I kept on believing that I would actually go to the next stage mm-hmm. I was called for interviews among the 54. Mm-hmm. They shortlisted to 19 mm-hmm. and the 19 names are the ones that they called to go now to Holland and get interviewed Definitely, by Holland. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and then after Holland interviewed the 19, I was among the 3. Mm. I was actually the last person to be interviewed, mm. but I made it to the list. You made it. Congratulations. <laughs> made What a powerful start <laughs> Thank of your you. professional professional journey. Thank so you. once you were inside the corporate world now mm. confirmed um, employee working for Hollard mm. uh, how then did you transition because uh, i've seen from uh, from your profile mm. on your linkedin you've worked for quite a number of uh, these firms mm. so how did you transition and um, just meander around okay the different employers okay so for starters for mm. me i think what really helped me was my attitude towards learning mm-hmm. because i already mentioned to say that i studied economics mind and in demography mm-hmm. but then got a position as a graduate trainee mm-hmm. in the insurance industry so yeah. that meant i had to learn insurance from scratch mm-hmm. so we had a very good boss at the time who was training us he was the chief operating officer for Holland his name yeah. is Rodo Sikazwe now he's a type of person who when he's teaching you he'll yeah. give you everything and it's really just up to you in terms of how much you consume mm-hmm. i would i remember asking him so many questions and every time i went to ask him questions he would take out a pen and a paper and he would scribble and draw different things mm-hmm. and i would get all Models. those papers <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I would get all those papers and then go back and study them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I even remember the uh, two weeks after being engaged on that program we were even given a test. Mm-hmm. I told myself, you know what? I really wanted this program yeah. and I thought I had no chance at it. So now that I have this opportunity I'm going to give it 100%. Yeah. And yeah. I remember in the first test which we had which they used now mm-hmm. to determine like which department you are going to be placed in, I had 98 out of 100. Mm. So <laughs> you're a tough nut, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so then yeah. from there I was uh I was after 18 months. Mm. I did so well in the program. I was placed in a department called special unit where I was dealing with reinsurance. I was underwriting the bonds and engineering risks. So that's after 18 months. and then in total after three and a half years of being with Holland there's a job advert that came up from Innovate General Insurance okay. which of course compared to Holland is a smaller organization but they were looking for a manager underwriting and reinsurance and because i listened mm-hmm. every time i was being taught mm-hmm. by the way i never reach a stage where i feel like i know enough i still yeah. ask questions that's over like my model to say yeah. you know what i'd rather look like a fool right now but mm-hmm. then when i have the information Actually. it's always mine to run with yeah. so when that job opening came up i went and i interviewed and they gave it to me so and i thought okay i'm like they are offering me a job position of manager underwriting and reinsurance and i think it's a good one to take up so i took it up i ran with it i was with innovate general insurance for 15 months and okay. while i was there as a manager as a manager yes okay. and then while i was there madison 
advertised for customer relationship managers. Yeah. And in that advert, I remember they mentioned to say you needed to have been in such mm -hmm. a job for at least five years. Mm -hmm. I'd never been in relationship <laughs> management. Uh -huh. But again, I just remember, I like having conversations with God. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling God to say, you know what, God, between you and I, I know the principles of insurance and yeah. I know the corners. So at this, which they are saying five years, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to apply mm -hmm. and I will interview for this job and I'll get it. And yeah. I applied I interviewed for the job and I got it. I love your courage. I love your Thank your, you. your confidence. You know, I've seen um I interact with um hundreds of people, you know, who would come to me seeking career guidance, mm. resume writing services, so on and so forth. Mm. So you find that I've seen a job advert, it speaks to them, mm. but because they've told them that you need to have a minimum of five years mm. or ten years of experience, mm. Mm. so automatically they disqualify themselves. So we'll sit down, we'll go through the job description, what uh, the advertising company is looking for. I'll start asking them questions. Okay, for this role that they're asking, have you done this before? Yes. Mm. Out of doing that, what did you achieve? Mm -hmm. So now we'll begin transforming the narrative from task-based to accomplishment-based. Mm. So if you're able to show that you are a higher performer, if mm -hmm. you're able to show that these uh, your past achievements with regards to what they are looking for, mm. then that minimum requirement shouldn't even play any factor when it comes to recruitment. Because sure. they're looking for someone who can add value, mm. who can bring results to the table. So if you can demonstrate that these are the results that I've achieved from the previous employers I've worked for, mm. then well and good. Kick in. Welcome to the business. True. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Very, very true. So now, um, so from Madison, you worked as a customer relationship, relationship manager, manager for two years. Two years, okay. Yes. Then after that, the person who trained me at mm. Holland, mm -hmm. uh, he called me back at Holland. Yeah. So to go and work in direct business, so yeah. manager direct business. Yeah. So when I got there, that was uh, February 2021. So you went back to Holland. I went back to Holland. And on that, yeah. I would say that's a beauty of not burning bridges. bridges? Yeah. Yes, yeah. because you never know. Mm. And I mean, you do a full circle like yeah. that. It's a good organization. I had a great time. Mm. I actually usually tell people to say that I am what I am today because of the foundation that they gave me. Yeah. You get yeah. yeah, so when I was uh, called back to work for Holland, I looked at it as I was actually honored. Mm. I was really, really honored to mm. say that they should have seen something positive for them to actually call me back to work for them again. Yeah. So I worked as manager direct business mm -hmm. for five months. Yeah. Then when they were happy with the results that they saw in this department, they asked me to go and do what I did in this department in another department. Okay. So I went and worked as manager broker markets mm -hmm. from October 2021 mm -hmm. uh, to February 2022. Mm. And that was my last month in formal employment. You remind me of my late father. Mm. Um, he always emphasized that to every process mm. there are steps to be followed yes if you skip a step you will miss the process and you won't actualize the promise that's a good <laughs> one i'm stealing that one please feel free feel free yeah, yeah. i'm stealing yeah. that one <laughs> i love it <laughs> yeah you have shared very insightful information mm. on how you can get to the top remain at the top remain competitive, influential, and very impactful. Mm. I think I'm going to leverage more on attitude. Mm. Yeah. Attitude is very key and uh, fundamental in everything that we do. Yes. You can have 100 PhDs. Mm. You can be the most qualified person in the room mm. in terms of papers. But if you don't have the right attitude, opportunities will just pass you by. Yes. And... Um, you will be frustrated, and that's going to be the end game. I've just remembered something. Yeah. Can I add one more thing? Uh, please, please. Go ahead. Yeah, so passion as well, eh? Passion, It yeah. could be linked to attitude, really. Mm, yeah. But I think sometimes when you're passionate about things, it's because you're asking to say, why am I doing what I am doing? Yeah. 
And in most cases, in these organizations, we are working for people out there. Mm -hmm. So if you always think about the customer when you're working, you will not skip a step. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen cases in the industry where uh, you, you've, uh, you've seen that I am in the insurance industry. Yeah, yeah. You know, somebody skipped a step. Mm -hmm. And because they skipped a s step, mm -hmm. a client has got a claim. And the process for them to get their money gets delayed because there was a step that was skipped. skipped yes, so yes, now yes. if you're always thinking about the customer, to say that when I'm giving this service, yeah. I want the customer to come and get the full benefits mm -hmm. at their convenience, mm -hmm. then you will be sure to uh, follow all those steps and have the right attitude even as you're working. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, We've kept on talking about insurance, 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 <laughs> insurance, so on and so forth. Um, here, uh, the young boys and girls, mm -hmm. students in secondary schools, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's that anxiety, more especially when you're in your final year, you're thinking about how am I going to perform in my grade 12? Mm. And uh, once that is said and done, what am I going to study? Mm. You know, every now and then they get you know, asked, what do you want to become when you grow up? What do you want to become when you grow up? Mm. But of course, I never asked them that question. Mm. Uh, I, I feel like there's no stage where someone is going to come and sound the bell to say, oh, Mumba, you've now grown, so you can now become this. Mm. Yeah, so I've, 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 I've changed the way, I, uh, or rather the approach that I take in asking that question. So mm. I ask them, uh, what problems do you want to solve? That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. So when I ask them what problems do you want to solve when you're done with school mm. or even when you're in school, they'll begin thinking about everyday challenges, mm -hmm. starting from their home, mm. the community, all the way up to school. So when they can relate with the challenges they face every day, mm -hmm. it becomes easy now to say, look, uh, we're having bad infrastructure in my community. We don't mm. have roads. We don't have proper systems or water and sanitation and stuff like that. Perhaps I should go and study engineering. Mm. Or maybe there's no community hospital mm. or there's a community hospital but there are fewer health workers. Perhaps I should go and study uh, medicine or nursing. Or we have schools but there are no teachers. Mm. Maybe let me go and study education, become a teacher, get back to my community, and be of service mm. to, 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 to the entire society. Mm. So now, when we talk about insurance, mm. okay, first of all, what is insurance? And what fundamental role does it play in our lives mm. and community as a whole? Okay, so I will say it in layman's terms. Yeah. So with insurance, basically what's happening is a transfer of risk. Mm -hmm. You have the insured, mm -hmm. who's the customer, who's transferring their risk mm -hmm. to the insurer. Mm -hmm. So what's happening there is the insured is saying, I will pay you, the insurer, a premium, and then should something unfortunate happen to me or to my asset, then you will be the one to cover me, to bring me back to that state that I was in right before I suffered the loss. Yeah. So uh, just to give a more practical example, mm -hmm. I could be a customer and I have a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then what I'll do is maybe I have a vehicle that is worth 100,000 kwacha. Mm -hmm. If I look at my finances today, I'm thinking, okay, if I... If I'm involved in an accident, I'm yeah. not able to just go and get 100000 and pay it. And even if I had it, I probably have other things that I can use it for. Mm -hmm. So then I go to the insurance company and tell them to say, okay, for the entire year, mm -hmm. I'll be paying you, as an example, 5000 kwacha. Mm -hmm. Should something happen to me, should something happen to my vehicle during that one-year course, yeah. I've given you the 5000 but mm -hmm. you will be responsible for any damages that happen to my vehicle. vehicle. It could be in terms of repairing mm -hmm. or if it's a total loss, as in the entire vehicle is uh, damaged and it has to be replaced, you have to be the one to replace it. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are terms and conditions like excess, which is a very good point to explain to customers every time you are selling insurance. Yeah, so you get to contribute a particular percentage as the insured, but really the risk would have tr been transferred mm -hmm. from the insured to the insurer. Now, what does that do? I will give you, I think the, the example I'll use is for a business. Yeah. Think about business continuity for uh, someone who's in business. 
a startup, for instance, or even people who've been in business for a long period of time. Mm. You know, there's an issue. Th there's something about stability in businesses. Yeah. That's why they plan. So insurance helps you to plan to say, I can plan to pay a five thousand worth of premiums for this vehicle that we are using for operations. Mm -hmm. Then, should anything happen to it, we are not responsible for replacing it. It's an insurance company that's going to replace, replace it. it. That yeah. way, they are stable and their operations will carry on. Mm -hmm. But in a case where they do not insure that vehicle, they say, "Okay, we're just going to get third-party insurance," which mm -hmm. of course is uh, the required minimum by law for you to have a vehicle on the road. What happens there is you're, you'll be responsible for repairing your own vehicle, uh, should it be damaged, or replacing it entirely if it's a total loss. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the funds that should have channeled towards the, the uh, replacing the vehicle mm -hmm. will destabilize your business somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you see how it's affecting the economy as a whole. Yeah. Because businesses are the ones that actually make up the economy. Mm -hmm. And here I was using an example of a small company, but then there's, we've had cases, there was a time when uh, Monday Hill caught, uh, caught fire. There was, yeah. There's been times when shopping malls have caught fire. Mm, so now, many times. yes, yeah. so when such a thing happens, insurance now comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. I've learned so much about insurance. Of course, I mean, my wife is also in the same industry. Yes. But she's more on uh, life. life. <laughs> so every now and then she's talking about this. So whenever she's talking about life insurance, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> we need to start preparing to meet the creator. So you have to, <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave the fundamentals in place. <laughs> yeah, but talking about, uh, for instance, like motor vehicle insurance. Yes. Uh, you've talked of, of premium cover and also third part, which is the minimum by law. Yes. And I know that many, many of the drivers on the road, they settle for... Third party. Third party. Mm. Yeah. So I was having a conversation with a friend and when we were starting up, when we came into Lusaka, I bought my first vehicle. Mm. So went for, for insurance. Mm. So they gave me the total cost for premium and then third party. I was like, no, no, it's too expensive. <laughs> so let me buy third party. Mm -hmm. Then the premium will be the blood of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Emmanuel, the Bible does actually tell us to yeah. plan better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, of course, it does. But every time before you step out, you know, you you, you plead the blood of Jesus. You are anointing the vehicle <laughs> <laughs> that no weapon fashioned against you <laughs> shall prosper. prosper. <laughs> yeah. So now, like in the insurance industry, what mm. sort of uh, career pathways are available? Mm. For instance, uh, if the young boys and girls or um, anyone who, who wants to pursue a career pathway mm. in the insurance industry, are there programs that are specifically tied to insurance or it's open to different careers? It's actually open to different careers. I mean, uh, insurance companies, just like any other company out there, requires accountants. Mm -hmm. So there are people who are in the accounts department. And in most cases, I haven't worked in accounts, mm -hmm. but I've heard most accountants in insurance say that the accounting in insurance is unique compared to the accounting that's done in other companies. The regular one. Yes. <coughs> so that's one career path there. You could be somebody who wants to do accounts and specifically concentrate on insurance. Okay. Or you could want to be in operations. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a part which I really love about insurance is that how far you go if you're in operations is really up to you. Mm. It's entirely up to you. It's dependent on your attitude, how mm. much work you put in. Yeah. I mean, I've worked in underwriting. I've worked in reinsurance. And in, in reinsurance, I was exposed to claims at mm. that level. Or you could be exposed, you could be exposed to claims mm. at the primary, primary level. level. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so there's that as well. Uh -huh. So the career options are, they're wide. They're wide. Yes. Okay. So And you see the beauty about... What I've just mentioned, mm -hmm. I have quite a number of friends in the insurance industry who also have been in underwriting. Underwriting is a department on its own. Uh, claims, that's a department oh, on its, its own. own. So you've been all over. Because of that, when there's an opening in the industry, it's very easy for you to transition from uh, one company to another because you've had that exposure. But 
as as is the case everywhere else there are certain people who would choose to limit themselves to say okay so for me i only want to do underwriting but for me i feel like i am a better underwriter and i'm a better sales person today because i've had an appreciation of the entire system because so this is the reason why you call yourself a sales enthusiast i am i'm very enthusiastic <laughs> about sales okay brilliant yeah 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 because <laughs> yeah, when you have an appreciation of what other departments do if i uh. I actually took time to also see what the people in accounts do and what they need. I may not be an accountant, but I paid close attention to the information that they will need from me mm -hmm. so that when I'm dealing with customers, yeah. that information is already readily available. Okay. I don't want to start calling the customer again when they ask me for that information. So when you have a full appreciation of what everybody else does mm -hmm. in the company, you are a better salesperson, you're a better underwriter, you're a better um, claims person and uh, say it all. Amazing. Mm. So then why should... Um one uh, consider pursuing a career or starting their career in the insurance industry the reason why is i believe i someone shared a quote mm -hmm. uh, with me two days ago yeah. i think it should have been by winston churchill okay. and it said perfection is continuous learning yeah. something in those lines uh -huh. And perfection is continuous That's learning. Right. So yeah. there's no such a thing as reaching perfection. Mm -hmm. But when you're continuously learning, then you are, that's perfection. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like the insurance industry gives you that opportunity. There's a term or a statement that we use a lot in insurance, that mm -hmm. we are the jack of all trades and master of none. No. Today, I will be selling insurance to somebody who's in construction yeah. and I have to learn a bit about engineering. They will tell me about their contract periods. They will tell me about those spaces that they leave uh, in between roads and the reason why they do that. Yeah. I have underwritten engineering products before. Yeah. I had exposure to see, oh, this is what they do in when, you, when you're an engineer in construction mm -hmm. and then they'll tell you why they do that and then there's things like buildings mm -hmm. i didn't know that there was categorization in terms of standard construction yeah. non-standard construction standard construction we're looking at this building that we're in mm -hmm. non-standard construction we're looking at these um, for instance picture the, the lodges mm -hmm. that are in livingstone that have got thatched yeah. Uh, roofs yeah. those are non-standard because it's easy for them to catch fire oh. so things like that then they'll tell you, you get to learn to say that it has to be if if a roof has got mm -hmm. such um material it has to be treated a particular way and then you need to leave space between the building and the fence and that space should be that much and then also the you need to cut you need to clear grass maybe between the building and where the grass starts and it should be that much you get to learn all those things you know almost as if you're in the fire department uh -huh. right uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then just the other day i was selling insurance to somebody who's in um uh in the legal uh industry yeah. like a law firm yeah. so you also get to learn about the people in that Injection. all those things what, you what, get what eh? them do they, do they at, at so? <laughs> well, so I there's, a, you. there's a special policy which we usually sell to lawyers yeah. professional indemnity oh huh, yeah things that's, that's like a demo i was looking for <laughs> <laughs> So you've seen that yeah. I've, I, like I mentioned, I did economics yes. and then I found myself in insurance mm. and because I'm dealing with different customers and for me mm. to give a good service to those customers, I've had to at least have an appreciation of what they're doing mm. for me to be able to say, oh, this is the type of exposure that you have. Mm. So this is the type of insurance product that you need. So if you are a lover of learning, mm. really, then the insurance industry is for you because in terms of how much information you would uh, consume, really, you are, you are the limit. Mm -hmm. you, it, there's no limit, actually. You can set it. You can only set the limit for yourself. Yeah. yeah, so that's why I would say, please come and join the insurance industry. You have fun as long as you have an open mind. Yeah. <laughs> so to our viewers, our listeners, you've, Head. <laughs> the insurance industry presents an opportunity for you to learn, 
grow and just interact with different sectors of the economy. Mm. But most definitely you need to be open-minded yes. and have the right attitude for you mm. to thrive, grow and progress within the industry. True. Now, I couldn't wait for us to reach at this point. Uh, you, you you know why I couldn't wait, right? Oh, I couldn't. <laughs> um, so you've had this brilliant career, mm. okay, um, as an employee. Mm. From entry level, like I mentioned earlier on, to managerial level. Mm. And then you just decided to say, look, I've had it all. I think it's time that I, I grabbed the bull by its horns and um, made things happen for myself. Mm. So tell me about about your transition mm. from full time employment mm. to entrepreneurship. Mm. Um, what made you decide to go into business for yourself? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for this one, believe it, I've always had a question that lingered probably mm. for like three long years. Mm -hmm. I always ask myself, am I capable of running my own project? And I probably the mistake I made was to allow this question to stay in my mind yeah. because it always came back mm -hmm. to say, quite all right, Mumba, most of the people who you've worked with, they have an appreciation for your work ethic. Mm -hmm. They'll say, okay, when you give Mumba work, she would do it. But then am I really capable of running my own thing won't I just go and sleep if it's my own? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I think yeah. that's, that's the question which lingered for the longest period of time. Mm. And then in 2021, mm. 2021, I mentioned to you to say, I, I, I really acknowledge God in my mm. life and in my career. I, I really can't separate the two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in 2021, I was attending this prayer meeting and there's somebody who was leading the session and she asked a question to say, do you have a vision? And if you do, have you written it down? Or do you have important questions in your life? And if you do, have you written them down? Mm. You know, that really challenged me. It's a Sunday. <laughs> we might as well have church in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, mm. so have you written down those questions and that vision that you have? Mm. After I heard that, you know, I got scared. Mm. I did not write down my vision or my questions until like two months later. Mm. I remember I was having lunch with, uh, with my friend Jahon. Yeah. And what happened there was I was like, you know, after that... After that prayer meeting, I haven't written down that vision. And I was with him when I was writing it down. And initially, I just wrote down a statement to say, you know what, I'm going to open up an agency business. And at the time, I was with Hollard. Yeah. I think it should have been uh, last year, April, when I was writing down the vision. Mm -hmm. I was with Hollard, and I was like, you know, it's a good brand, so let me just start an agency firm. Mm -hmm. And you see, with agency business in the insurance industry is you only get tied to one company yeah. you can't sell for other insurance companies mm -hmm. so april after writing it down fear came in because i knew that what this meant was if i have to stop working i have to fend for myself and i think i got scared of hunger or something <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's a huge so risk we all face should I continue working? I have this vision. I'm running this podcast. I'm into career services. Then I'll be like, okay, what happens if that month no income comes in? You see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. So I, I, I don't, let me not say luckily for me. I'd yeah. say I think God really did give me wisdom. The time I was working for Madison, mm -hmm. I had started saving with Madison Finance. Okay. So I already had somewhere to start from. Mm -hmm. And these, are, these were purely just monthly savings. Mm -hmm. I, I, I made it a point because for the longest period of time, I made excuses to say I don't have enough money to save. But the moment I started deducting that amount to say this is for saving, mm -hmm. uh, it really worked miracles and it actually gave me hope to even dream mm. having a savings account mm. so i was like okay i have somewhere to start from but mm. it's not enough 
So now I had to also increase the amount of money I was saving. Mm -hmm. By the time it was July, from having the conversations I was having with myself, I challenged myself. I'm like, okay, is it that you don't believe God will help you? That's why you think you should just do an agency business. Maybe you should go into broking. Mm -hmm. That was another level of fear. <laughs> but I just kept on challenging myself. Yeah. July, I knew to say, okay, the rate at which I was having conversations with myself, mm, I had a lot of conversations with myself in my head, yeah. a lot of them. Uh, by the time it was written July, I had decided now to say, okay, I won't do agency, I'll do broking. I want to deal with any insurance company so that if a client has got preference and also just to have that wide um, a range of products, mm -hmm. I'd rather deal with all the insurance companies. So yeah. in my mind, I decided to say that I was going to set up a broking firm in August, I remember talking to one of my mentors. Mm -hmm. uh, she was my yeah, one of my mentors, telling them to say, "Look, I think I have strong thoughts about uh, leaving formal employment to go into entrepreneurship." Yeah. This was this is a sobering person. I was thinking she'll tell me don't do it. She's just like you've come to a wrong person. Actually, do you mind if I'm your partner? Yeah. <laughs> And this is somebody with a very strong personality. Yeah. They get things done. Yeah. There was at that point really there was nothing to think about. Mm. So then it was set to say, okay, it's shaping up. Mm. By October 2021, Emmanuel, all the fear went. But then I got scared because I was not scared. Mm. You get because mm -hmm. when you reach that point, you're like, okay, there's no going back. back. Because all the excuses which I even had to say, okay, no, maybe this, maybe that, yeah. all those things had been clarified. So by October 2021, I really knew that I was going into entrepreneurship. Okay. So that's where uh, we started having discussions in terms of uh, registering the company and just setting up the company and just looking at the vision that we had for the company and things like that. By December 2021, I even told my boss, the one who had called me back yeah. to Holland. It's one of the toughest conversations because it was the second time I was leaving the company, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I can, and Im I can there, imagine. Yes, and yeah. you know, people talk. Yeah. That's the thing. People talk. You, you hear people say, oh, no, but where is she leaving again? And things mm -hmm. like that. But I think we all have purpose to fulfill we all have shoes to fill in life so uh, look at the question i had am i capable of running my own project it lingered and i only got peace after i addressed it mm -hmm. so uh, people won't understand that yeah so i uh, not to say that my boss did not understand he's actually one of mm. my favorite he's one of mm. the people that really cheer me on yeah, one of yeah. the best really in yeah, the industry yes yeah. yeah. so i had a chat with him and i told him what the plan was and we agreed to say that my last month would be february just to help with the proper transitioning all right yeah. yes so yeah, February 2022 was my last month in formal employment. Yeah. And as of today, we have an insurance broking firm that has been set up. We okay. are fully licensed by the Pensions and Insurance Authority. And we have membership with Insurance Brokers Association of Zambia. And we even have office space. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. A very big congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. For gathering up um, the courage. Mm. Almost three years the back and forth, mm. living on fear, mm. doubting your own capabilities, yeah. but eventually stepping out of your comfort zone mm. to feel comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Begin rolling the ball mm. to be where you are today. Mm. Yeah. So, what does your company do in? Okay, so Poised Insurance Brokers Limited is an insurance broking firm. Mm -hmm. We are licensed to deal with all insurance uh, companies in Zambia, mm. uh, be it them selling general insurance products mm. or life insurance products. So when you think of your motor insurance, agriculture insurance, engineering insurance, property insurance, mm. group life assurance, mm. the pension schemes, medical insurance, bonds and guarantees, whatever type of insurance you can think of in Zambia, 
we are licensed to trade with all insurance companies. And I know ma- people usually have this question to say, okay, are you, re- are you an insurance company? Yeah. And just to clarify, we are not an insurance, insurance company. company. Okay. We are an insurance broking mm-hmm. company. Mm-hmm. So we are the middleman between the insured mm-hmm. and the insurance company. Oh, okay. And and yes, and for us to do that service for you as a customer, we do it at no charge to you. The charge is never to you Uh whatsoever. When we're doing our broking services, we get a commission from the insurance company. And some people may have questions to say, okay, do you find ways of loading the premium? No, we do not. It's actually, from the research which I have done on the market, Mm -hmm. people who get services from the broker usually get cheaper and more competitive services Mm -hmm. because mainly when, I don't know if it's a mentality thing, but mainly Mm -hmm. when insurance companies know that there's business coming from a broker, they'll be competitive knowing that this is a broker. They haven't only approached me. They've approached other insurance companies. So they want to be competitive. So they will give their best terms Uh at their best premium. So that's basically what we are doing. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, from the description, it sounds like a lucrative business, eh? It is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I must, I must join you guys, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be there, you know, uh, sitting on the yeah. advisory board. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I mentioned, so you know, we were only licensed last month. Yes. yes. We were only licensed ma- last month and for office space, we only got our office first October 1st. Mm-hmm. So this is when we are doing the setup yeah. and everything else, but we're already functional, we're already servicing clients. Yeah, I remember, you know, we we're supposed to have this conversation, I think, was it two two weeks ago? Yes. Yeah, and you told me you were up and about trying yes. to set up the, uh, the, 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 the office, mm. putting everything in place. Mm. Yeah, so everything is set now? You know, I think it would take some time, but okay. there's a good balance. Okay. There's a very good balance. But mm-hmm. in terms of operating, we are very much operational. All right. Yes. So, uh, and uh, since February, when you left full-time employment, mm. up to where you are today, mm. how has been the journey of very being interesting. an entrepreneur? <laughs> it's been very interesting mm. because for starters, I mentioned to say that we are licensed by the Pensions and Insurance Authority and we are members of Insurance Brokers Association of Zambia. Yeah. There's things that they require you to have in place mm. before they can give you that license and mm. give you that membership. Mm. I have learned a lot, Emmanuel. Mm. Starting from... You know, you learn in school to yeah. say, come up with a business yeah. plan, plan and stuff like that. do that and yeah. that. But I actually had to get down and come up with a plan that is convincing. Mm. So things like business plans, I got exposure to things like power of attorney because that was also needed. Yeah. Uh, coming up with a model for the company, procedures and processes. Mm. They'll mm. ask you for interesting things, which... That's why I was saying it's, it's very important to know why organizations would ask you to do certain things. For instance, the pensions and insurance authority will require you to have two bank accounts as, as a broking firm mm. because they don't want you to mix up operations and premiums, premiums. that are coming from the clients. Yeah. Why? Because you know you have that responsibility to now channel mm-hmm. money to insurance mm-hmm. companies and also channel money to ZRA. Yeah. So there's that. They do proper due diligence on you. Also, they want to make sure that you are financially stable Mm -hmm. to do this business. Look, if you're not financially stable, you receive money today from a customer and you would chew that money. Yeah, very true. There's that. So they make sure that there's proper due diligence done before Mm -hmm. they can give you that license. And I'm happy to say that. Poised insurance brokers mm. passed that test and we're in good books with these uh, regulators. So those are some of the things that I've been up to uh, this whole period. Mm. And then also, um, I really took an opportunity to just also introspect, uh, just prepare myself for this next phase yeah. where I needed to attend... Uh, say Toastmasters meetings. Yeah, Toastmasters. Yeah, there's yeah. that 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 has been a 
very big part of my career. Uh-huh. I don't know if you have a minute for me to just dive in a yeah, bit. Yeah, and, and, and you know, t- talking about that, you know, oh. I've, I've been approaching different guys, you know, asking how how, how can I be a member? Like, hmm. I, I really want to be part of 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 of, of that networking community mm. and just continue improving my public speaking mm. skills, mm. you know, enhancing my confidence, mm. presentation, so on and so forth. Mm. But I haven't been getting. Like, don't worry. <laughs> Please. After this conversation, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. After this conversation, you will become a toastmaster. <laughs> well, sign me in. I'm ready, very ready. <laughs> yes, the reason yeah. why I say toastmasters has been a very big part of my career and also just for me as a person was in 2019 when mm-hmm. I joined Madison General Insurance. Yeah. The company has created a a corporate club for their employees mm. and basically it's it's they've just seen the need to say look these are people who are selling insurance mm. and they need to have skills which will help them communicate to be also better leaders and public mm. speakers yeah. so when when i joined madison to, when i joined madison general yeah. insurance mm. and i found that there was this club mm. i just went for it and it really came in at a timely time for me because mm. i mentioned to say that when i joined madison i was a customer relationship manager yeah. and they gave me an opportunity to go on radio, to go and talk about products. I remember the first time I told, I was told to say I needed to go on radio. Oh it my was all God. shivers. The nerves. <laughs> <Four feet>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you ever gotten so nervous while you're preparing? I mean, you haven't even started. The interview hasn't, you're just preparing for your interview mm. and you start getting nervous. Mm. The, at that time, I had already joined uh, Madison Toastmasters Club, but I wasn't so serious. Yeah. Then after I was told to say that I needed to feature on radio mm. and on TV, yeah. I I called Jahan, who's also the uh, club mentor for Madison Toastmasters, yeah. to say, look, I need help here. Mm-hmm. And I remember having, the beauty about Toastmasters is there are people who are also very passionate about mentoring you. They will mentor mm-hmm. you in leadership, communication, and public speaking. Mm-hmm. So I was mentored both in the club and also mm-hmm. on a one-on-one level yeah. on what to do to make sure that I deliver that good speech or deliver that good interview. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when I did all my sessions at Madison, the radio interviews, yeah. people came to me and they were like, oh my God, you're good, you're good. And yeah. I'm like, if only you knew you. that I had help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have learned from being a Toastmaster, I've learned the power of preparation. Mm-hmm. I've learned the power of trusting that your mind is capable of delivering for you. It's asking mm-hmm. questions like, look, if I can have a conversation with you mm. without cameras and without any radio equipment and mm. I can flow in that conversation, mm. why can't I have it with you when there are all these other equipment? So th- th- there, are se- there are segments yeah. in a Toastmasters meeting where they teach you mm. to speak on your feet like they'll mm. give you a topic right there and then mm. come up with a top come up with a speech maybe for two minutes it should have an introduction it should have a uh, body and you should have a conclusion mm. so the more you keep on doing that the more confident you become in saying you know what if i can have a conversation with one person i can mm. have a conversation in the uh, in the presence of many people so yeah. the confidence now started being built today when Probably, if you'd probably tell me to say I'm coming for the podcast, if uh, I'd seen all these uh, equipment, like, oh. trust me, I'd have thought there are guns <laughs> firing at me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but Trust Masters really has helped in shaping my career and also just me as a person, believing that I have, you know, we all have stories to mm, tell, mm. but how do you tell that story if every time you are told to speak, you're just thinking about your nerves? Yeah. Wow, that's an awesome experience, um, mm. more especially that you've drawn um, much of, of what I would term as wider experience mm. in, 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 in terms of um, your confidence, mm. your courage, mm. uh, strategic positioning mm. in the corporate world and of course in the business world mm. uh, from this networking community that we're calling a Toastmaster. Mm. And talking about giving a topic on the spot, Mm. I remember a time when I was doing school in Howard University, uh, mm. I was Washington, D.C. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I think there was a topic that I had picked, like, you know, they'll just tear up some papers, write topics, mm. then you get into the box, you pick, and then on the spot, yeah. Speak. You speak. Mm. 
So I got mine, it was a color bash. So I was like, a bow was rolling on the highest mountain, holding a color bash full of blood. <laughs> Boys say let's talk about girls and <laughs> girls say let's talk about boys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like I, I was just confused like okay, what do you want me to talk about the exactly. color bash, you know? <laughs> yeah, but it's all about preparation and yes. um, when you're hit on the spot, you're ready to make a presentation, mm. defend, attack, so on mm. and so forth. True. So, as we zero down into this this conversation, you know, we can go on and on and on. Mm. Yeah, it's non-stop. The conversation is very seamless mm. um but just as part of um the downtime mm. um what would you suggest uh, having gone through our educational system right mm. to where you are today mm. what would you suggest that certain things that you're experiencing now mm. could have been taught either in high school through to university to prepare you for such times as this. Mm. Yeah. So the first one, I think I'm happy to mention the first one. I'm not so sure. I don't have all the information, but I saw Lia Bambe where mentioned that mm. she's working with particular organizations to make sure that financial literacy is taught in schools. Mm. I think from grade one. Yeah. I think that one is very important mm. because if you can be taught the way you're taught your ABCDs, yeah. the importance of financial literacy, yeah. this whole country will be transformed. Mm. My, I, I mentioned to say that I, I had part of my confidence mm. in making this step was the fact that I started saving. Mm -hmm. If I had no savings, where do I even start from? Mm. Look at the, the, the gap between February and, and now. now. Yeah. when we've actually fully started operating, mm. what would I have been eating? Mm -hmm. You get? Yeah. And, yeah. and maybe yeah. I would have even gone into depression. Who knows? <laughs> depression and debt. <laughs> you see? <laughs> DD. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So financial literacy has to be taught in school. Mm -hmm. And then also the issue of public speaking. Mm -hmm. Because to be honest... Each person has got a unique message. Yeah. And the reason why we all have unique messages is today you and I can be in the same lecture room yeah. and we'll pick up a particular topic, but how you process and how I process, it will be different. different. If we're taught to make a presentation on the same thing uh, by uh, just bringing in our thoughts mm. and everything else, you give a different speech and I'll give a different speech. So we are missing out on all those stereo stories mm. if our people don't have the ability to express themselves. Mm -hmm. I think the ability to express yourself is it's very, very important and it has to be fused into the educational system at another level. Not just the way we used to do it to say this person is part of a debate club and mm -hmm. it's optional. You know, from grade 1 to 12, somehow I managed to run away from debate clubs. I never debated, not one day. Why? Because I was scared of mm -hmm. speaking in front of people. Mm -hmm. Until when I saw that there was nowhere to run to and then Toastmasters did come to my uh, rescue and yeah. I do thank God for that. But then you can imagine how many more opportunities I missed out on mm. all these years because I was scared of speaking in front of people. Mm. Yeah, so I, I'd say financial literacy, uh, public speaking, uh, values. Okay. Okay, no, for values, we do have, mm. uh, uh, I know, I don't know what they call it today, the RRE, religious yeah. education, religious I think education, they call it, there's something they call it, something. As well, here and there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so those, those they, they shape your values as yeah. um, a community without values, really, where will it go? Mm. So I think those are the three things which I can just emphasize that they should be re-emphasized in the educational system. Mm. Yeah. And as uh, as your final <laughs> closing remarks mm. for young people who are yet to choose on a career, mm. okay, um, what would be your advice to them? You know why this one is very easy uh -huh. because you already said it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Ask yourself what yeah. problems do you want uh, to, to solve? solve. Uh -huh. You know, in uh -huh. sales, it's re-emphasized to us to say you mm. don't sell to customers mm -hmm. you sell for customers mm -hmm. so because the issue is i'm providing a service a solution mm -hmm. what solution are you trying to create for the world mm -hmm. and it has to be infused with passion mm -hmm. don't just think about money mm -hmm. 
And the reason why I say so, can I give you one example? Please go ahead. <laughs> a week ago, uh -huh. there's a customer who wanted to buy insurance from me. And he told me to say he's got a house. Mm. And in our conversation, I like to ask a lot of questions. I ask them so many questions. And then from that chat, it came out that his papers were with the bank. So mm. I was like, oh, with the bank? Do you have a facility, a loan facility with the bank? And he's like, yes. Then I'm like, oh, then if your property mm. is, has got a loan facility with the bank, most likely you already have insurance because no bank will get a house as collateral that doesn't have insurance. insurance. They will actually place insurance themselves. Yeah. The man was puzzled. He's like, you are here, you want to sell insurance, but then you're telling me to say most likely my house is already insured. I wouldn't have been bothered, you yeah. get it? Eh? Yes. I would have just bought the insurance. Yeah. But the issue is what solution then am I creating for you if I sell you double insurance? Mm -hmm. Your house already has insurance. Yeah. I want to see the problem that is being solved for you. Yeah. I love money, yes, everybody loves money. But the, the Gruders. You see, <laughs> but my values yeah. and also my passion won't allow me to contradict what I stand for. Mm. So ask yourself those questions. What problem are you trying to solve? Because I think that's how life works. I believe I will have a lot of customers because of the integrity and the values that I have. Mm. That's what I believe. Amazing, mm. amazing. Mm. And the last one. For those that are still struggling, mm. God has given them a vision, mm. but they're debating whether they should go into entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. Mm. or stay in full-time employment. Mm. What's your message? What's your advice to them? So for that one, start with writing down that vision. Uh -huh. There's something about writing down something on paper. Have yeah. you ever noticed sometimes that you can have one line only, mm. but when you write it down, I don't know what happens. Like mm. It's a miracle, but you start... You keep on going to the second line and the third line and the fourth line, yeah. just like that. So start there and always clarify the reason why. Mm -hmm. It all goes back to why, whether it's in employment or entrepreneurship. The question is, why are you doing what you're doing? Mm -hmm. And if you are convinced at that level, then you should venture into it. Mm -hmm. But of course, don't just say, uh, because I love this, I'm going to do it. I did mm -hmm. mention to say, for me, savings were very instrumental for me. And then I also had to research. You have to research the industry that you're going into. Mm -hmm. I've been in insurance for eight years. I've had an opportunity to see what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've had opportunities to interact with, even before I became a broker, I had an opportunity to interact with brokers and I was able to see the gaps to say, mm -hmm. okay, they've told me this, but if it were me, I think I would do it like that. So mm -hmm. I was seeing the gaps and seeing, okay, I would want to create this solution then. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so uh, go for it. Of course, there's a lot of other things that have to come into place, but mm. make sure that you answer all those questions mm -hmm. in terms of financing. Where's the financing going to come from? Have you done your proper research in that industry? And then uh, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. uh, you need to have all that in place. I won't tell somebody to just be a dreamer and just go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that would be my advice. You're listening to your number one career talk podcast, the Mind Power Career Talk podcast. We were featuring Mumbangoma, who's shared with us very fundamental information about her career journey in the corporate world and, of course, transitioning from full time employment into entrepreneurship. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you've been jump started with enough information to help you kickstart your career journey. Mumba, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. We look much, forward Amanda. to further interactions yes, with you. Yes, please call me back. Sure, I will. <laughs> Thank you.